Mumbai University in 91 and along with that she has also done acupuncture course. Mataji joined ISKCON movement in year 92 and has been strict follower of Vedic principles since then. She is currently serving as a counsellor for the Radha Gopinath congregation. She is also an active member of Grihastha committee over here. Mataji along with her family often travels to Kolhapur to help preach there. She has been playing a major role in youth preaching services and children program. <clears throat> As we all know, she is our regular speaker in Chetna festival and she is inspiring and guiding many young girls like all of us. And she is a beautiful homemaker and a mother nurturing three sweet, cute, most intelligent daughters. So I, will, I want everybody, please welcome Radharani Maji. Thank you, Maji. Yeah, so our topic for today is look before you leap and think before you speak. As we saw in the drama that sometimes just a word spoken can create such havoc. The king spoke rashly. The minister spoke rashly. He did not communicate properly. And the king said, I don't want to get my daughter married to a bhangi. Actually, that's the word he uses. And it causes so much confusion. Luckily, the minister is very wise. He is very mature. He uses his intelligence to save the day. He actually saves the situation so that everything ends nicely. But it may not happen every time. We may not be so lucky because King Purushottam Dev was a devotee of the Lord and the Lord had plans for him because Purushottam Dev and Padmavati went on to become the parents of King Pratap Rudra, who was one of the very close associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, very, very often we see that because of rash behavior, we may cause a lot of problems in our own life and in the lives of others. At least I speak for myself. I have chosen this topic not for all of you, but I have a very selfish motive. I am speaking on this topic because I need to learn this myself too. Many times after I speak or I say something, I regret and I think, oh, I should not have said this. You know, or after I speak, I realize that I was wrong or I judge someone wrongly or I should have waited before speaking. It happens to me so many times, especially with my daughters. I have three daughters. One teenage like you all, another two are almost teenagers. So everybody has their own egos. <laughs> and then we have a very nice time sorting out the egos. So I want to work on this myself. And that's why I'm speaking to all of you. And I hope in the process you also get some benefit from this. So the first thing is generally we act or speak on impulse. Impulsively we speak. So we have either rash behavior or we have rash words. That is, we act without thinking or we speak without thinking. Now in rash behavior, there are two types. One is action and second is reaction. What is action? Next one. Next. Action means we act without thinking about the consequences. That is a rash action. Where we don't think that if I do this, what will happen? For example, the first one we have mentioned is rash driving, drunken driving. So many accidents happening. I myself, unfortunately, have witnessed so many times, especially on the Western Express Highway, teenagers driving. You know? And I have seen, just few days back, I saw, and then it came in the paper also, a young college girl was flung on the road, and she died on the spot, and her the boy who was with her was really badly injured. If he's alive, he will be booked for rash driving or he dies, both are bad, equally, equally bad. Because he will never be able to forgive himself for killing his girlfriend. He is the cause. Because sorry doesn't work, right? If we say sorry, one mistake done, it can damage somebody for life. So rash driving, drunken driving, or for that matter, things like smoking. We don't think that by my doing this, how it will affect me and affect others. 
we have a small clipping on smoking next you can click on that yeah no the earlier one it's not coming if you click on that it doesn't come okay leave it so there is this small video on smoking where two friends are talking to each other and one friend is telling the other one to smoke but as he is talking the other friend can see smoke coming out from here of course it's not real they have given that effect he can see that inside his lungs are burning you know the the esophagus is burning so they say that the cigarette smokes you you don't smoke the cigarette so what is the effect of smoking nowadays many young girls have taken to smoking i stay opposite sis college you know and i see so many young girls smoking and i really feel tempted to go and shake them you know and tell them that don't do this you may think it's fashionable but it's really bad for you you are going to be a mother in the future it will affect you it will affect your child's health it it's really causes, causes damage for men or women it can cause death in the long run right but why do people do it because they don't think they don't think that what will happen it's not that they don't know on every cigarette packet it is written right statutory warning is written you go to cinema theaters they along with the ads they flash this also so it's not that people don't know but they don't reflect sometimes when we hear something many times your mind blocks it huh? like when i keep telling my kids clean your room put your things in place keep your shoes properly do your studies they have a mental block they have heard this so many times that after some time it's just going on like a maybe tune in their head they don't act on it so we have become numb to this instructions so people do it in spite of knowing that it is wrong next no before that there's something else you can go back to the earlier one before that before that yeah so we had rash driving smoking and the third one is suicide which is happening very often nowadays in fact just a few days back we had a suicide case just in our neighborhood where a young woman committed suicide she has two babies 7 month old and 7 years old the whole family is totally broken hearted so when somebody does this they don't think that what will happen to their family what will happen to them it is said if you commit suicide what are you doing why do we suffer does anyone know why we suffer can anyone tell me whatever problems come anybody because of our own karma because of our past actions we suffer so then we have a certain karma that we have to complete and we commit suicide thinking that we can escape that karma but it doesn't happen we when we take birth again again we will have to bear the same karma and it will be worse it is like a prisoner who has tried to run away from jail he will be given more punishment and to top it if someone tries to artificially end the life before that time they don't get a gross body there is good chance of them becoming a ghost right so people are in ignorance they don't know what happens they feel if i commit suicide then everything will be peaceful but it's not the suffering doesn't end and what about your family what about the what about people shri shri radha gopinath bhagwan ki jai what about your family what about the people who are attached to you what will become of them people don't think so what if you got a little less marks in your exam so what if somebody else is more beautiful than you so what if your boyfriend left you and went away is that more important is that more valuable than your own life can you give someone life then you don't have the right to take life not even your own so people do this because they don't know what will be the reaction what will be the consequence next next point is illicit sex right why do people indulge in illicit sex they have a fling or they have an affair and they think we will enjoy but they don't know what will be the result of doing that first of all karmically it is very bad you get lot of bad karma and second 
being in a woman's body good chances of other things happening you know once a boy he went to his father and he said i have chosen this girl i want to get married to her so father looked at the girl she was very beautiful and seemed to be very intelligent so he said she is so beautiful she is so intelligent why she has chosen you you know tum badmash ko kyun usne choose kiya so the son said uh, uh, she just has a small problem you know that she is everything is all right so father said what is a small problem so he said she is a little pregnant huh? but that little will not remain little right it will grow it will not remain a little problem so we have to think of the consequences first of all character is like a white cloth once a black stain it cannot be washed off it cannot be wiped off the consequences of that are are very very harmful and very emotionally also they affect the emotionally also they affect physically they may affect and so many problems crop up so we need to think before we do something it is better to choose the much treaded path to choose the path which the scriptures give us which the lord gives us so that we can be happy shila prabhu path who is the founder acharya of iskon he always speaks about shreyas and prayers that we don't think of what is good for us right now right now we may be enjoying something but in the future that may not be good for us but now we may be doing certain things certain discipline or austerity which right now we may feel oh how boring sha maza nahi hai isme you know but in the long run we will benefit our parents used to tell us when we were small study hard now so that later on you can be comfortable you can relax so we have to know what is good for us in the long run then we will take the right decisions in our life next is love marriage i am not against love marriage huh? but i why i am talking about this because i have seen so many girls who blindly go into marriage without thinking and suffer later on if you have a love marriage and you are very happy it's a happy ending all's well that ends well very good good for you but it doesn't always go that way because fairy tale endings are only in fairy tales real life is different when you have to actually live life when you have to face harsh reality then so many problems come up so as young girls my request to you is this is what i tell my daughter also that my request to you is don't go only for looks don't go for that curly hair the man becomes bald after some time huh <laughs> the flat stomach be- turns into a paunch what needs to be seen is the stability the character the family background because you get married into a family so you have to see so many things before you take a decision then divorce again rash behavior nowadays i see that on small very small flimsy grounds girls boys they want divorce before the marriage you are so much in love with each other you tell your parents if you don't get us married to each other we'll kill ourselves and then after marriage you are willing to kill each other huh? so what is that it is ridiculous why because there is absolutely no tolerance real love means you try to sacrifice for each other you serve each other that is real love not just you know giving exchanging one diamond ring with each other and that's it no when you are willing to serve each other willing to extend yourself for each other and willing to accept each other at whatever as they are then the relationship lasts any relationship if you expect that everything will be very rosy and everything will be very happy not necessary it takes time for a relationship to build it takes time for a relationship to grow it takes time for a woman to give birth to a child right it's not that she conceives and delivers immediately that happens in the demigods immediately they deliver nine months the child has to be in the womb and the child has to grow develop similarly a relationship has to grow 
develop you have to give a relationship time whether it is a relationship with a friend it is a relationship with your with any relationship we have to give time we should not be rash we should not be impatient which is one of the main characteristics of the young right the youth are impatient they are enthusiastic but at the same time they are impatient they are not willing to wait immediate especially now it's a fast moving life we have got used to getting things very quick if things don't we, we call someone and they don't pick up immediately we call the next number tak 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 next number we call a friend are uska contact tak 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 i have seen you know that people get so restless it's okay wait for 5 minutes call up again but everyone people get so hassled if they are not able to contact so they are used to things moving very fast but if we just have some patience then things work out things don't always remain the same people don't always remain the same people change right so if we give people an opportunity then relationships can be improved we should not take decisions when we are angry i remember once i read this in i think i have spoken this earlier also in chetna i read this in a book called readers digest a very nice anecdote where a boy and his father they go into the backyard and the boy tells his father father this tree has dried it's winter let's cut down chop down this tree for firewood so the father says we should never cut a tree in winter wait till spring comes so then the boy says why so he said you'll see why so when spring comes and they go into the backyard they see that now there are small tiny tender green leaves coming out so the boy is very excited he says father father there are leaves on this tree so then the father explains to him that never take decisions in winter never cut a tree in winter what does it mean never take decisions when you are sad when you are tired when you are angry when things are going wrong don't take important decisions at such times never wait wait for spring to come if somebody is very tired you should wait when they are fresh you can talk to them and get your things done right so we should wait and when things get a little better when our mind settles down where we are in a consciousness where we can understand what we are doing then we should take important decisions lastly physical violence most of the time why does physical violence take place people don't think first of all first of all violence always gives rise to bad karma it creates ill feeling in the opposite person it never gives any solutions whether it is parents beating a child or a husband beating a wife nobody is happy when they receive physical violence in their life nobody is happy right so how can it be right so that is why one should not be rash and if we are rash and if we inflict physical injury on somebody else just wait it's going to come back it's like a boomerang it'll go and it'll come back to you again so that is why we have to be very careful violence can be physical or it can be through words we may be hurting someone physically or we may be hurting somebody through our words words we will be covering a little later next one very next ha huh? one very very glaring example of rash behavior in the mahabharat is gandhari let me tell you why gandhari when she was pregnant and she had high hopes she wanted her husband to become the king but he was blind right he could not become the king then she thought my son my eldest one will become the king but she came to know that kunti has conceived before her that means kunti's son would be elder to her son so she became very disturbed that means now kunti's son will become the king not my king so out of great envy and anger she banged her womb with her hand and what happened she had a miscarriage a dead mass came out and then ved vyas was called and he put 
divided that into 100 pots and 100 sons were born many years later the battlefield of kurukshetra there was a war between the kauravas and pandavas everyone in india knows mahabharat i don't need to go into details when all the kauravas were killed and krishna came to meet gandhari gandhari was very upset with krishna she said krishna you could have averted the war you could have prevented all this but you didn't and it's not fair hundred sons hundred of my sons were killed at least one you should have left you killed all so then krishna gently reminds her he says first of all i tried to avert the war your son wanted the war krishna goes right as peacemaker so he gently reminds her he says do you remember when you were pregnant you banged your womb with anger and envy you transferred your envy and anger into that mass and the personification of envy and anger was born in the form of duryodhan so she said that was such a small mistake i made i just banged once in anger he said it is not this, the size of the mistake but it is when and where the mistake was done right so a woman who is a mother or who is going to be a mother has tremendous power why because she can shape shape that embryo she can shape that soul which is within her womb by giving good samskaras by giving good values what she thinks what she does what she says how she behaves will affect the child within the womb it was not that gandhari was a bad person she was a good lady in fact she is considered to be one of the most chaste ladies mandodari kandhari they are considered to be one of the most chaste ladies but in a fit of rage without thinking of what would be the consequence she just banged and because of that there was so much havoc in the future so sometimes it may be a small mistake but it escalates just like sometimes you may leave your house 2 minutes late but because you leave your house 2 minutes late you miss the 9 10 some other local or whatever you want next train comes after some time or you miss the bus you miss the bus the bus comes after 20 minutes so you are 2 minutes late but now you are 22 minutes late because the bus has come late and because now it's become late the traffic on the road has increased so instead of reaching 20 minutes late you reach 40 minutes late because now the traffic has increased so small mistake of not being on time but what are the result that you are much later than what you set out you set out only 2 minutes late so sometimes we may make a very small mistake we may say a small word wrong or one just one sentence i i just said one sentence but as it's going it it is like a ball it gathers more and more momentum and by the time it's gone to the other person and then another person then it creates a lot of damage it can cause a lot of violence so we have to be very careful next yeah. so sometimes we speak sometimes we speak rashly out of anger but sometimes we may speak or we may behave in a wrong way out of ignorance but ignorance of law is not an excuse it is our business to know we must make it our business to know if you get into a first class compartment and the tc comes and you say i didn't know mai kali bombay shahar mein aayi is he going to leave you no you will have to pay the penalty you will have to pay the fine so because we are human beings and we have been given what is called as vivek we have been given the power of discrimination so we must know this is right this is wrong we must know and only when we know that then we can take the right decisions in our life how we can know that we will discuss later on next next is without blessings why i have taken this point is because it was related to the 
drama. You might wonder why we should take blessings. We have to take so many spot decisions in our life, right? So how can we take blessings every time and whose blessings can we take? So now this king Purushottam Dev, he got very angry. And in a fit of anger, he said, let me go and attack this king, you know, who is so arrogant and I'll teach him a lesson. So he went, but he did not take the blessings of Lord Jagannath, Baldev and Subhadra. And then what happened? He badly lost the war and he came back. He was totally defeated and he came back. And then when he came back, he was very disturbed. He went to his ministers and asked that, why did I lose? No, I am a devotee of the Lord. Why was I defeated? So his ministers told him, did you take the blessings of the Lord before you went? He said, no. So they said, now you take the blessings and then you go. So second time he again went, he begged forgiveness. He, ble- he prayed to the Lord that my Lord, I don't take this as a personal offense to me. I consider this as an offense to you. He said, I am a street sweeper. He did not even consider the fact that I am sweeping in front of your rath. So this is not an offense to me. This is an offense to you. That is why I am going to fight with them. So please give me the power so that I can you know, teach this arrogant person a lesson. And he prayed and then he started making all arrangements. But by the time he set out to fight, Lord Jagannath, we could not show that in the drama because there wasn't so much time. But Lord Jagannath and Baldev, they actually come in the form of soldiers and they ride two horses and they go there and they totally defeat the king and the king's entire army. By the time Purushottam Dev reaches there, the king is already defeated. The war is over. So it pays to take blessings of our seniors. It pays to take blessings of the Lord. Because when we take blessings of elders, when we take blessings of the Lord, then things become auspicious in our life. You may say, where is the time to take blessings? So Arjuna, there is one incident in the Mahabharat that when Arjuna was standing with Krishna and Kunti Devi and all the other members of his family after the war was over, suddenly Ashwatthama released the Brahmastra because he wanted to destroy all the Pandavas. So at that time, Arjuna asked Krishna and Krishna told him that you should retaliate. You should send another Brahmastra which will not allow his Brahmastra to come. So it is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam that before sending the Brahmastra, before uh, reciting the mantra, Arjuna, he did Achaman. He did Achaman, he prayed to Krishna and then he did it. Now, Brahmastra comes at full speed. Where is the time to pray? But still Arjuna prayed because he understood that it is not me. It is the strength of the Lord that is allowing me to fight. It is the strength of the Lord. And how do we know that? Because after Krishna left the planet, when Arjuna was coming back with all the uh, coward, you know, ladies, all the queens, not covered ladies, sorry, the queens. He was coming back to Hastinapur. That time some, just some common robbers or common people attacked them and they were able to overpower Arjuna. Totally. And he became very sad and he realized that Krishna has left. That is why now there is no strength in my Gandiva bow. The strength was because of the Lord. It was not my own strength. So when we pray to the Lord, then we access His strength. We access His blessings and His mercy. So that is why we should pray. And when we pray, it also gives us a good consciousness and a good discrimination to decide what we should do, what we should not do. And if we are still confused, we can always take good advice from seniors. Sometimes we may feel our elders are very old-fashioned. Maybe there is truth to that. They might be very old-fashioned. They might be giving you advice which is from Adam and Eve's time, right? But they have your welfare at heart. Right? They have no ill feelings for you. They have your welfare at heart. 
So it's at least we owe it to our elders to listen to them. And then we can decide. But at least we should hear them out. So we should take blessings and that will really help us in our life. Next. Yeah. So till now we were talking about action. What we do which can cause painful reactions in our own life, which can disturb us and disturb others. Now we will discuss about reaction. One is we act on our own and the second is we act as a reaction to what somebody else has done to us. Right? But what happens is most of the time we jump from the frying pan into the fire. You must have, if you have travelled by local train, you must have had a lot of experience. You know, uh, one of our senior brahmacharis, Radha Gopinath Prabhu always tells this story that he was travelling by train once and you know how people sit, four on a seat. No? So one man was sitting on the third seat and he wanted to remove his hanky but he was so tightly uh, you know, being crushed from both sides, he couldn't sit up. So somehow he was trying but it was not coming out. So he stood up just for one second to remove his hanky and that fellow fourth seat, he shifted and one more person sat. So he said, I was just trying to remove my hanky Please let me sit. This man said, no, now you stood up now. So they started fighting. They started fighting. The fight went on for so long. And this man had to get down at Matunga. The other man also got down with him. And on the platform they continued fighting. The train went. (laughs) The train went, but they continued fighting. So many a time that we create more problems for ourselves by our reaction. We don't create solutions. We create more problems. And sometimes what our reactions are not proportionate to the problem. Because everybody is stressed out. Everybody is in a hurry. Right? Seeing the watch. So a little bit, you touch, they are like live wires. You will get a current. You know? Everybody is like this. Thoda touch. You know, you get a shock. So you have to be so careful before speaking to anybody. You go to government offices. It's a pleasant surprise if you get people who talk to you nicely. You know, who actually talk to you and explain to you things nicely. Like I was at a railway station and I was buying a ticket and the man in front of me, he gave a 10 rupee note, 8 rupees ticket he had to buy. So this man, instead of giving him 2 rupees back, he gave him 1 rupee back, the one at the counter. So this man asked, 2 rupee hota hai na? He threw the coin on his face. He said, Aat rupai chutta do. He said, Aat rupai chutta nahi hai mere paas. I don't have the change. He said, then, Phir charbi kyu dikhata hai? Aaj kal ek rupai to bhikari bhi nahi leta. Means, first of all, it is his mistake. He can say, I don't have a one rupee coin, two rupee coin. That's okay. Maybe the man would have understood and walked off. But, Chori upar se sina jori. You can't just talk like that to anybody. People don't think before talking. Talk rudely, talk rashly, roughly, you know. And then it becomes a chain reaction. This man who is angry, I was just thinking, I was just seeing his face. He didn't give him the ticket. He said, either you give me 8 rupees or I am not giving you the ticket. He didn't give him the ticket. I don't know what that man did afterwards. But then he later on must have got angry with his family or something. You know, it just it becomes a chain reaction. So people don't think what will be the reaction You know, what will be the result of our behavior? How am I affecting people around me by my talk or by my behavior? Next. We have these two stories which my kids gave me. The lady and the mongoose is a classic story from Panchatantra which all of us must have heard in our childhood. She has a mongoose in her house and she has to go out for some work. So she has a small baby in the cradle. She tells the mongoose, please take care of my child pet mongoose. When she comes back, she sees that there is blood on the mongoose's face. So she gets so hyper, she take a, takes a stick and starts beating the mongoose. She kills the mongoose. And when she goes in, she sees that there is a dead snake lying near the cradle. She thinks the mongoose has killed her child, but actually the mongoose was protecting the child and it killed the snake. She cries so much, but the harm is done. So sometimes when we speak or when we act, they are like arrows shot out from a bow. 
we can't reverse it we can't take it back that is why we have to think before we act we have to look before we leap and we have to think before we speak next is this genghis khan there is a story about this king who was going for hunting it's a long story i'll tell in short and there was some he was very thirsty there was water coming from there was like a waterfall and he was very thirsty so he went to drink water he had a golden uh, what is that called uh, a cup or a goblet whatever they call it he went to collect water in that cup and he had a hawk who would always i don't know they can be seen on his hand he had a hawk who would always travel with him a pet hawk and he went to drink water the hawk dropped the uh, cup from his hand two three times he went to do it and the hawk drops so he was already tired he was you know way he just wanted to drink water he got angry he took the sword and just killed the hawk and then when he went a little above to take the water he saw that there was a dead snake lying in that water so that water had become poisonous and the hawk sensed that saw that's why the hawk was not allowing so before we take decisions before we act impulsively we should at least know we should be in knowledge before we take decisions we should try to hear we should try to observe we should try to listen we don't have the patience to listen right it takes more courage to sit down and listen than to stand up and talk we have to have that much courage that much patience that we will listen that we will see we will think we will try to know what is the other person's situation before we say or we do something next yeah so what is the solution for this type of behavior first thing is knowledge we need to be in knowledge we need to know that if we do something what will be the reaction if we know then we will be more careful we know that if we do, if we don't appear for an exam we are going to flunk the year then we will go and appear for the exam right so because we are in that knowledge whether we have knowledge of the book or not but at least we should have knowledge of the rules right so if we have the knowledge then we will try to act in the right way hopefully right and how do we get this knowledge we get this knowledge by hearing if we are constantly hearing about what is right what is wrong or we are reading we are reading good literature we are reading scriptures shila prabhupad has translated all the sanskrit important sanskrit scriptures into the english language for the common man anybody can read and easily understand there are big books like the shrimad bhagavatam chaitanya charitamrit but there are also small books which are very easy to understand and they give us a lot of knowledge they give us a lot of guidance on what is the right thing to do and what things we should do to become happy in the long run so hearing reading and good association jaisa sang waisa rang whoever we associate with we will become like that if we get good friends if we get good association then we will learn good things and we can live our life in the right manner right so leading a life based on scriptural knowledge is very very important in especially in today's day and age because life is so stressful everywhere there are problems financial problems health problems there is pollution outside so many problems are there but if we have the knowledge of the scriptures we derive great strength we are able to tolerate we are able to bear so many difficulties in our life with a smile on the face right we are able to bear small small things that happen in our life understanding that this is happening because of my karma and if i react very strongly aggressively or harshly i may worsen the situation so we learn to think before we act it is said that the greatness of a person can be estimated by how one can tolerate provoking situations every day in our day to day life there will be provoking situations in the house in the bus in the train maybe in college with the teachers in the office with the boss but we have to learn to be tolerant and by regularly hearing by regularly reading the scriptures by associating with those who are already practicing this type of life 
one can get the knowledge and one can get the strength to do this next as i said if we understand the laws of karma we will understand that as you sow so shall you reap next so i have said that we will talk about actions harsh behavior or rash behavior and rash words words spoken in ignorance without thinking right a classic example is of queen kunti when arjuna in the swayamvar won draupadi's hand and brought draupadi to kunti devi kunti devi she was inside the hut and arjuna knocked and kunti said who is it said arjuna said mother i have brought something for you he made a mistake he said something he should have said someone he said i have brought a gift for you something like that he said and she without asking who is it what is it she said panchon mein baat lo right she said divide it amongst five of you because that was their golden rule whatever would come they would divide and then when she saw draupadi she was what did i say she was like you know shocked and she said it's okay let arjuna get married so arjuna said no you have said it okay then let yudhishthir get married to her so yudhishthir said no it won't happen like that you have spoken these words and now you know thy will will be done bas so she said but how can it be he said you should have thought of that before speaking so he says that one who is in the power who has authority to speak should not be in ignorance when they speak they should be in full knowledge when they speak because when you are in that authority when you are in that position of authority you have so much influence on people around you you have so much effect on people around you that is why you have to be very careful of what you speak there is another story which is very relevant in this point there is one i read it on the net that there was one boy who went joined the army and he used to keep writing letters to his mother and once he wrote a letter to his mother saying that one of my friends you know he has lost one arm he has lost a leg and he has lost one eye and he just wants to he doesn't have parents he wants to come and spend some time with us is it okay if i bring him home so mother said who wants such a person it would be such an embarrassment to have such a person in the house and uh, such a difficult uh, situation it would be it would be very it would be a burden on us don't bring him next day they got news that their son has committed suicide he was talking about himself it was not a friend but he couldn't directly tell them so he asked in this way so when he understood that he would be a burden he would be an embarrassment for his family he felt it's better to end his life so when we have an effect on people around us when we are an authority for someone or when we are a guardian for someone then we should be very careful about what we speak and how we behave next all of us have studied about mary antoinette right who is she who was she french she was the wife of of whom anyone us hen ha huh? henry louis yeah 16 so the famous sentence is very famous in history she was an austrian princess and she was very young when she got married and because at that time the aristocrats were leading such a luxurious life and the poor people were leading a life of starvation because of the difference between the haves and the have nots there were a lot of problems and there was a revolution in france and the people came to the gates of the palace and they were banging they didn't have food to eat and mary antoinette very innocently asked why are they shouting so minister said that they don't have food they don't have food to eat you know they said they, they are asking for food to eat so she said oh they don't he said they don't have bread to eat he meant they don't have food to eat so she said oh if they do not have bread then let them eat cake she meant she, she meant it literally actually she didn't even know what sort of position these people were in what they were suffering but that one sentence the entire family was wiped out guillotined her her kids everyone the people were in rage they were totally and it was like mob fury when they heard this sentence they went bad how can she say this they don't have bread let them eat cake right everybody was 
totally destroyed. So why? Because she was sitting in the ivory tower. She was not knowing what is the condition of the people around her. She was not in knowledge. So, it is better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. We don't have to prove that we are a fool by speaking. She proved herself to be a fool when she spoke these words. That means she was not at all in touch with reality. She didn't know and it was violence. Her words caused violence. Her words caused total violence and havoc. Next. Words spoken in anger. When we speak words in anger, what is the effect? Sita Devi spoke words in anger to Lakshman. Right? The, the conflict was between her concern for Ram and Lakshman's confidence in Ram. Lakshman had great confidence that nothing will happen to Ram. But Sita had so much concern that she actually spoke rudely to Lakshman. She actually suspected him of wanting to get married to her. She says, you want Ram to die so you can enjoy me. And these words hurt, they pierced Lakshman's heart like an arrow. He had never looked above Sita Devi's toenails. That's why he could never even recognize any of her jewelry. Later on when Ram asked, is this Sita's bracelet, is this Sita's earring? Lakshman could not recognize. He had never looked above her toenails. So his heart was pierced and then he went. He drew the Lakshman uh, Rekha and he, he went ahead. But the harm was done. Sita realized her mistake. When Ravan came and kidnapped her, she realized the mistake. But the harm was done. One small mistake. She did not listen. She reacted harshly. She reacted very rashly. She did not try to understand, think peacefully. Of course, that is the Lord's pastime. It was meant to happen. So that Ram would go and kill Ravan. But we have to learn lessons from the scriptures. That sometimes a small mistake, a word spoken harshly, and we may have to suffer a lot. Next example in the scriptures is of Shringi. Shringi was the young Brahmin boy who cursed Parikshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj went and wrapped a dead snake around his father's neck out of anger. And Shringi was just a chit of a boy. He did not respect the king's seniority. He did not respect his level of a devotee. Rashly, he just pronounced a curse that he will die in seven days out of snake bite. Because he did not think. His father chastises him. What have you done? You have brought to an end a golden era. Till King Parikshit was there, Kali could not enter. The moment Parikshit left, Kali you entered. So, one word spoken harshly, one action done can result in so much problem. Next is Hitler. We all know about Hitler. Again, he had so much power. He was a great orator. But what did he do with that power? He misdirected people. He misdirected. He had some hatred. He had some anger against a certain community. And he used that power to destroy the community. He was not physically very well built or very strong. But he had the power to speak. Right? He could speak and he could motivate people. But he caused so much violence because of that. So, you should think twice before you speak because your words and influence will plant the seed of either success or failure in the mind of another. By the words we speak, we can either motivate people, inspire people and help them to become successful or we can totally misdirect people, hurt people and cause them to become failures. So, what is the solution? Next. Yeah, I, I didn't say about that. That when you are angry, you should count 1 to 10. And when you are very angry, what should you do? Count 1 to 100. Because many times, when we want to do something good, we should do it immediately. But when we want to speak something negative, we should wait. Because sometimes in time, it will be revealed that sometimes we don't need to speak. We don't need to speak. The situation corrects itself automatically. Or we realize that we are wrong. It's happened to me so many times. Now I goof up and then I realize, oh no, I shouldn't have spoken this. Or I shouldn't have even thought like this. 
I was wrong. I misunderstood this person. And then I really regret. But then sometimes it can cause a break in relationships which are very fragile. It's like a crack on a glass. You can't repair it. So we have to be very careful. So what is the solution? We have to know the facts. Then we should think, am I authorized to speak? Am I having the power to speak to this person? If yes, then I can speak. Have I been asked for advice? Our Guru Maharaj, I remember in the early days, he had given us this piece of advice that never be a self-appointed counsellor. Give advice only when it is asked for. So many times we try to give advice just because we have the knowledge. But it will be valued only when somebody actually wants it. Fourth, will it help the person? I may be knowing, I may be authorized and somebody may have asked for advice. But if I speak harshly, will it help the person? So we should think that only if it is going to help the person, we should speak. Otherwise, sometimes silence is golden. We might be able to help better by being quiet. But if we are required to speak, then we must speak. Because sometimes not speaking can be violence. And last is constructive criticism. Even if we have to point out something negative, it should be done in a very positive manner. It should be done in a very respectful manner. So that the person who is on the other side will not take offense. So the person in the, on the opposite side will not be discouraged. Because we hate the sin, right? Not the sinner. So I have this uh, thing on introspective analysis. And I won't go much into details because we don't have much time. I'll quickly run through it. Shri Shri Radha Gopinath Bhagwan Ki Jai. So I'll just take the first line from each one. So first we have to observe ourselves and find out where we go wrong, where we make a mistake. Sometimes in the same situation we blast. Or with the same people we get angry. Why? So we should observe that. Then after that, next. We should recognize our situation. We should understand that what circumstances, what triggers off my anger. We should analyze that and we should start observing it. Because by becoming, by observing it, we start becoming conscious of it. So the more skill we become at recognizing, the more likely we will be able to change our approach or our behavior. We should observe the conversation and we should start focusing on what the person is saying. Many times we in our mind start deciding what we are going to say. Before the person is speaking also I have decided, Abhi aya isko jhaadunga mein. No, we have already decided. So that is why half the time we don't even listen to what the person is saying and we make a mistake. Observe people, how, we, how they are speaking, how they communicate, so that we can also learn how to communicate in a proper way. Maybe we have good intentions, but sometimes just our way of communicating may irritate people. So we must learn the art of proper communication. Then we should formulate responses. Supposing we have made a mistake, we come home, we analyze and we think, I could have said this in a better way. How could I have? I could have said it like this. I could have said it like this. So we go over those dialogues in our mind. So next time we are put in that situation, hopefully we might be able to give the right response. So we have to work on ourselves. It just doesn't happen like that. We have to actually work on ourselves and have a genuine desire, a sincere desire to respond positively, to be positive, to think before we speak. And if we try, then we will be able to. So we have to consider this information. What I am saying, is it effective? Anata. Is it necessary? Is it accurate? Is it timely? And is it appropriate? If you are just responding because other people are talking, then it's possible your communication doesn't fit the Anata model. If not, then sit back and continue to listen. You want what you say to have impact, not just make noise. If we create a negative impact, then what will happen? Proper communication will not take place. So that is why we have to identify, we should understand. When I say something, how people will react. Again, we should be thoughtful about our tone. We may be saying something, but how we say it is very important. You may say, oh, I didn't say anything, I just said this. But your tone, your mood, how you speak, 
that has a big impact on the listener communicate you now know what you will say why it's anatta that is the earlier point how you will say and the most likely reaction wait for an appropriate break in the conversation and then speak it's usually best not to interrupt although there are occasions when that will work best hmm? and last repeat step 1 so we have to keep analyzing if we are making mistakes we have to be analyzing why we are going wrong where we are making the mistake and lastly we should be humble if somebody points out our mistake we should be willing to accept that mistake because we can't see ourselves other people can we may think that we are very sweet very humble but other people may see us as aggressive and that may come as a shock as a surprise to us but it may happen so we should be humble and we should be sincere genuine so that we can think before we speak we can look before we leap and we can make a very positive impact on all those who come in contact with us thank you very much hare krishna please give her a very long please give her a big hand thank you very much abhi